Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Business Minute. I'm your host, sir. And today I'm joined with a special guest, Mr. Jamie Miller. How you doing, bro? Good, yourself? Can't complain, can't complain. Uh, so, Jamie, I, I asked you to be on the show for a special reason. Uh, we're talking about uh, domestic violence, a topic that is pertinent in our community. And uh, I wanted to uh, just introduce you a little bit. So, uh, could you tell everyone what it is that you do, bro? Okay, uh, I'm a police officer in Florida. I just respond to calls and patrol my areas where I'm assigned to. All right, all right. If I may ask, how long have you been active as an officer? Currently, I've been active for about 10 months. All right. Okay. And uh, this, and Jamie, um, you and I go back a few years, so that's why I felt comfortable bringing you on the show like this. So that brings me to uh, one of my favorite questions. Uh, what inspired you to even become an officer? I would say more like a lot of my friends did it and they just said give it a shot. So I was watching a video of a police chief, I believe it was in Dallas, and his whole speech went to everyone complaining about what officers don't do, what they do, you know, how they make their decisions. And his biggest thing was if you don't like how officers conduct their day on a daily basis, why not join them to fix the issue? Mm. And I, I just believe that that thing kind of touched me. So I was like, well, yeah, why not try it? I might like it. All right. Okay. In the, in the age where, I hate to say it this way, but being an officer has become vilified nowadays. Uh, were there any obstacles you did get or any pushback from the community as far as your decision? I wouldn't say really like community. It was almost kind of like family, you know, mm. to the point where they were saying like, oh, you're going to be like the rest of them. Your Uncle Tom this, you know, oh, man. you're going to let you're going to let the badge go to your head. And I, I mean, I use that as to help. I know I can be a better officer. So I use that as ammunition mm -hmm. to not be that person, you know, and to prove these people wrong. All right. All right. And, uh, you know, and I, and like I said, I've known you for years and uh, you're a friend and an officer, but you're an officer first. And I always respected that. And so that, that made me ask you this question, you know, with it being one of those uh, titles that's full time, you know, you're an officer all the time. So how do you manage to balance work and your personal life? You got to know, you know, when to shut your phone off from work. You know, you have to be able to say i work from this time to t this time once this time comes i am off i don't want to hear anything about work i don't want to talk about work <laughs> and, and and that's just how you have to do it because I, some people let work control their personal lives mm -hmm. and that hinders your family i mean you know if you bring work home you know you can make bad decisions at work and if you bring home to work you're still gonna make bad decisions you know mm -hmm. um you know being a police officer it probably has one of the highest uh, divorce rates uh, here in wow. the U.S. and and I, I believe people don't know when to turn that switch off. You know they you know they got yelled at their supervisor, and then they go home either a go yell at their kids or b go yell at their wife. And you know after a while that gets old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and that's that's very insightful. I appreciate that point of view. So that brings me to my next question. You know, with you being an officer for coming on a year, uh, were there any moments so far that were the most memorable for you? Like anything that that stood out that was like, wow, you know, I, I really appreciated that moment. This is why I do it. A lot of times it's usually when you're just sitting in traffic or, you know, just eating somewhere and you have like either a kid or an adult come, come up to you and say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you do what you do. I'm thankful, I'm thankful for it. It's correct, Bill. You really don't get a lot of encouragement. You just get, oh, hey, you know, you just made a rest. All right, I get back out to work. You know, mm -hmm. so some encouragement is good every now and then, especially from the public, because it's nowadays it seems like nobody really notices the things you do. They just see, you know, you either A, handcuff somebody's mother or daughter or know be taking somebody to jail so they really don't see the other side of it okay well that you're you're absolutely right uh, a lot of times it's, it's easier to see the ugly sides of your job and especially when you're in a position where you you have to take someone from their family sometimes due to 
situations and bad decisions. So you're absolutely right. At any point, did you feel that you wouldn't be successful as an officer? And if so, who or what changed your mind? I would have to say, kind of when I first started, you know, you go through like a little FTO phase where there's somebody evaluating you at all times, you know, your entire shift, you know, for about three, four months. And at the beginning, it was a little rough because they expect you to know so much coming into the career field. They want you to know, you know, how you write your reports, you know, where are you going, how to talk to people and that. And at first, it's a little rough if you've never really done the job before. So at one point, I was really thinking, like, is this career really for me? Or did I really make a wrong career decision? Or, you know, it, should I look for an alternative route to get into something else? Mm-hmm. What really changed that, I would say, is I stopped overthinking everything. I think that was one of my bigger issues. Like I overthink everything and I just kind of let it happen naturally, you know, just just have a conversation with somebody. That's usually how you'll get any information you need or be more sincere. Because a lot of times when you come in contact with people, they, they just really want to talk, honestly. A lot of them just want to talk to somebody, you know, either their husband or their kids or anybody in their family you know not really listening they're just talking and not giving the other person a chance to talk so that's usually where you come into play and you kind of you just listen and naturally it just it just became easier half of the part of uh having a conversation uh successfully is listening so you're right two people sometimes can get caught up in just the talking portion you're right I, i want to ask you something a little bit further down the road you know with you being an officer where would you like to see yourself in your career in one year, three years, and then in 10 years? In one year, right now, what I'm focused on is figuring out what I really want to do in this career field, like mm-hmm. what um, division or uh, subdivision I'd like to get into. But also, what I'm really focusing on is just encouraging other people to also be a police officer. I think what people do nowadays is they go off everything they see in the news and they say oh well I don't want to be a police officer they're the most hated or you know so I try to give them an inside source like myself to push them to be that person like you know hey if you feel we act this way come ride with me you know come take the support me come to this call with me and you see how I conduct myself um, rather than what you see on the news you know because <clears throat> usually a lot of times the news don't give you the whole truth. They give you half the story because that's what's gonna bring the ratings to the news. Mm. Give me, give you the gore of what happened, and not give you everything that led up to that call or everything afterwards. I would say in three years, I'm looking to becoming a traffic unit. I love to do traffic. I mean, I let you guys know that all the time about all my traffic stops. You know, oh, who yeah. I come in contact with. Um, I, I tell you my funny stories. I tell you the bad stories. I give you everything. True. True. Um, I would say in 10 years, which I hate to look that far ahead, (laughs) (laughs) but uh, I would rather be a sergeant in 10 years rather than more of the lieutenant and captain side. The reason being, as a sergeant, you are the leader of your ship. You, you know, you're the, the glue to a ship. You can either make or break a ship. You can either be that one sergeant that everybody hates and your you know your your staff makes you look bad or you can be the most lovable sergeant and everybody wants to get in your shift usually up towards the lieutenant and the captain side you really don't have a chance to sit down and have talks with y'all so you know let find out what's going on with them if they have any issues does anybody need help with anything do you guys need equipment you really don't see that from the lieutenant i mean he kind of asks the sergeant what they need and all right, and that's kind of it. You really don't see the the admin portion of the job. They're just there to kind of take blame or to trigger down the problem if, if there's any issues. Man, I, I didn't know there's so much depth and uh, different roles in, in in you know in your field. Enlightening and scary to have that many roles at once. You know, so I wish you the best in that, bro. Honestly, I, if anybody can do it, not trying to sound cliche, but I, I know you can definitely do it. Knowing you. And um, that brings me to my last question. Uh, What words of encouragement would you have for someone else like yourself who's pursuing their dream career? Like, what could you tell them? Um, Don't let nobody talk you out of your career. Whatever it is, if it's working at McDonald's, checking hand receipts at Walmart, 
anything, no matter what it is. If that's what you feel like you can do the best, go for it. Um, a lot of younger generation these days have an issue with taking a risk. You know, some people want to take the risk, but they don't think they can do it, so they really don't do it. And I tell people, just do it, just try it. You won't, you can't succeed if you never really try. You know, sure. people are scared of failure, but how would you see the the light at the end of the tunnel if you don't go through the tunnel, go through the darkness? You know. That's true. That's absolutely true, man. Uh, a word spoken from a great man. All right. Well, uh, Jamie. Uh, normally, this is where I would end the interview. Given, like I told you before, I, I want to get your inputs on a particular topic that's currently hot. And uh, I wanted to uh, just get uh, an officer's point of view on this situation. Domestic violence. The reason it's being brought to light is a lot of time this is a topic that's shied away from. A lot of time overlooked or it's eclipsed by other things. And I want to shed light on it because it's very prevalent nowadays. I wanted to ask your personal opinion, what are some of the common denominators or what are some common factors that you've experienced on any calls involving a domestic situation? I would say one of the biggest factors in domestic relationships, usually either any hard drugs or any soft drugs, which involves alcohol, marijuana, um, cocaine, crack. Um, also, another one that really a lot of people don't notice or they don't hear about is abusive upbringing. Um, mm. A lot of men and women are usually abused by their parents. They get into, a, I guess, another relationship and they really don't know how to deal with their issues. So they end up taking it out on another person instead of um, dealing with the parent or, the, uh, you know, the mother, the father, the brother, the sister, whatever. Mm hmm. That's I think that's probably the biggest factors that I can think of. Okay. For domestics. And uh, you know, we we've all, you know, seen how those situations can turn from um, unfavorable to in some cases deadly. And uh you and I have had the conversation several times that we feel that yeah, people talk about domestic violence situations, but a lot of times solutions aren't presented. Um and I wanted to ask, what do you feel are some of the best, I guess, solutions or preventative methods you could uh, do or anything you could do to, if you feel that you're in an abusive situation, what, what, what is something you could do to those who feel helpless? Um, which this is going to be hard to say, uh, but if you feel like you're in an abusive relationship or which if it's family related, um, husband, wife, girlfriend, whatever, if you think you're in an abusive relationship, you probably should part ways. And I tell people that on every single domestic call I've been to, if even if the uh, wife was the aggressor or the husband was the aggressor, the brother was aggressive or the sister, I, I, I let them know like, hey, listen, you know, this is what I got. This is what I'm going to do. I really think you should reevaluate this relationship. Um, if you guys can't live on the same household at peace, I think one of you should go. Um, a lot of times, a lot of people just don't want to leave. They've, they've been with that person for so long, they've gotten used to it, so they kind of try to stick it out and work around the abuse, but it's almost impossible. I mean, you, you know, with us, sometimes we go to that house, you know, two, three, four times a week. Mm. You know, uh, a big issue about domestics is... If it's verbal, we have a little leeway um, about what course of action we take. But once it becomes um, physical and there's marks on any person, we have to take action. Um, mm -hmm. So usually what the other person does, usually when they're uh, intoxicated under whatever substance, they're, they're all for arresting that person, arresting them. They're, they're all for it. They'll give you... A report they'll give you everything the moment you you put those i call them bracelets the moment you put that those bracelets on the other person everything changes and then that's when um they start to say oh you know i don't i don't want him to get in any trouble i'm sorry i called you guys um you know they started defending that person and I, it, it sucks that way but we still have to take action um, mm -hmm. 
But mm-hmm. even if even if we do make an arrest, a lot of them don't even prosecute. They'll go down to the state attorney's office the next day, and they'll say, uh, "I don't want to prosecute. Can you drop the charges?" And then they're they're back in the house together, and it's back to square one once again. That's is it, that's terrifying. Honestly, it's it's sad. It and uh, and like you said, it, it sounds like it's just complacency. Um, it's, you know, I understand the reality can hit and hurt, you know, when seeing those, like you said, bracelets get put on that person. But honestly, man, I, I, I'm from an age and I've seen domestic situations escalate at the drop of a dime. I, I just feel like it's best to part ways. If you're getting to that point, if it's that heated and it's no longer about coming to a solution and an argument, it's time to let it go, man. Um, Absolutely. I, the, 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 it doesn't stop. Exactly. It just gets worse over time. Uh, it, it feels like uh, when you don't love yourself, you'll tend to dwell in that toxicity a little bit longer than you should. You know, um, I think people are getting caught up in love from the wrong places, which is, uh, like you said, due to abuse from, you know, at an early age. Sometimes that's all that people know. But I feel right. like you know people should know they do have help in the police a lot of times we can't vilify them for taking action when action is called for you know like you said you see bruises marks anything physical you got to do what you got to do you got to protect people at all costs and sometimes it's at the cost of someone's you know freedom temporarily and it's and i think a lot of people forget it's the case of what may happen i i rather you be safe then someone end up dead. Correct. And, and, and that's what a lot of them forget. Um, it's just a pre- preventative measure. So, you know, let's say uh, I'll just throw out some random names. A, a female named Susan says, my boyfriend, uh, Barter, punched me in the head. You know, you get there, you see Susan with a knot on the side of her head. Um, you talk to Susan. She tells you what happened. You talk to him. He tells you what happened. And she says, you know what? I've changed my mind. I don't want you guys to do anything. I'm, we're just going to part ways for the night, and, and we'll deal with it tomorrow. And you say, okay. And then you leave. The moment you leave, let's say he kills her. Now that falls on the officer because you could have prevented that if you would have took a course of action besides just leaving. Hmm. Yeah. You know, um, People hate us for doing that, but it's just a preventative measure, especially when you have kids involved. You don't want your kids to grow up and think that is the norm because they're babies or, you know, they're preteens. I mean, they're like sponges. They, they soak all that in. Even if they don't say anything, they still soak all this stuff in and say, well, my mom and dad did it. I might as well let my future boyfriend do it and my future husband do it because it was the norm. It was the norm when I was growing up. Man, that's terrible then. A lot of times I think uh, as parents, uh, and I, I'm not saying, I, I'm not a parent, I'm not saying I'm perfect, and I'm not harping on anyone else, but you really, this goes to show you really be careful, because children see, and a lot of times they see more than you think they do, and you know, they don't forget that type of stuff, so you're right, uh, let's not set an example the wrong way, uh, just by allowing them to see or hear. A lot of times those kids aren't asleep, man. Just because you put them to bed and y'all are screaming. Hey, sometimes they hear all that stuff and remember it. You know? I'm surprised what kids uh, know and what they hear. Uh, I remember I had one case. Uh, <clears throat> it was a physical domestic talking mm-hmm. to the husband and wife. Um, and, you know, I was just having a little casual conversation with the child because he came outside. Um, you know, just kind of ease them down to see just to make him seem like everything's fine. And I asked him, you know, you know, how's, how's living with mommy and daddy and so forth. And then he goes and tells me a whole story and dates and times of oh when God. his mom, when his dad beat his mom, what he hit her with, how he hit her with it. And this is, you know, probably like an eight year old kid. Telling me stuff. So. I just I, I try to tell people, you know, be careful what you're doing for your kids because they're always watching, they're always listening, no matter where they are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I, and I appreciate that tidbit you harping in on that because I don't think that that really settles in until 
people hear those accounts. And so, um, like you said, brother, I, I really appreciate the tidbits there. And uh, I, I think it has to do with not being afraid to, to stand up and really stick by the, that decision to let someone go. Like you said before, if, if it's getting to that point, it's rather be safe than sorry. Jamie, uh, again, bro, I, I appreciate you for allowing me to interview you and getting your insight here. Um, is there, like, in, in case anyone wanted to uh, send you any questions or anything, is there any way, or maybe your department, uh, is there any way they could get in touch with your department if they have any questions or just want to contact an officer? Because we never know, uh, there may be a victim, you know, that may want to reach out for help. Absolutely. Uh, I can give you my Facebook information. My Facebook name is uh, Jamie Miller. Look up Key Largo. Uh, sorry about that. Marlon County uh, Sheriff Office. Uh, our number is 305-853-3211. Um, just call down and say, can I speak with Deputy Miller? I have a couple of questions. I'm, I'm more than welcome to answer any phone calls or any questions if you got any. Um, and not even pertaining to domestic, just anything in general, any general question that you have, just give me a call. I, I, if I don't have the answer, I can find it for you. I appreciate it, brother. Uh, you being a resource is a blessing, bro. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much, Jamie. Anytime. All right, brother. Thank you.